Hi, I'm Tom Morton. I'm the Chief Strategy Officer at RGA, and we are here to talk about understanding brand growth. Uh, this is an important basic for any strategist, because the underlying ask for any client is, well, how do I grow my brand? And we've seen a standard model emerge around this area in the last 10 years. It's best articulated in How Brands Grow by Byron Sharp. And it starts with a pattern that you see when you look at the brands in a category, and it repeats across different countries and different categories and products and services. And this pattern is that the big brands, those with high market share, always have more customers than the small brands. There's a consistent relationship between the size of your market share and the size of your customer base. Uh, in theory, you could get growth by uh, winning more customers or getting those customers to spend more. Uh, in practice, brands grow by winning more customers. Marketers like to talk about super users and loyalists, but really you don't see many big brands that owe their sales to a small number of heavy buyers. And then you dig more into the psychology of buyers and you can see why. Consumers, and this is a great phrase, consumers are cognitive misers. They don't think a lot about brands. They don't make spend a lot of time thinking about the purchases they're making. And they don't see any big meaningful differences between brands and categories. If you look at a shopping behavior, people are buying what's available, whether that's mental availability for what's in store on the first page of a search, or the mental availability of the brands they remember. That thing we call loyalty? In practice, it's just bigger brands enjoying a slightly higher frequency of purchase because they're easier to buy. We see even more evidence of this standard model of brand growth when we look at how marketing campaigns create business effects. It turns out the most effective marketing follows the pattern that Sharp identifies. Campaigns that target the wider market tend to create more business effects than the campaigns that target existing users. Your brand is more likely to grow when it tries to grow penetration than grow loyalty. This is also a really good case for the power of broad-reaching mass marketing. It means that if you're a brand that wants to grow share, you should mass market to grow penetration. Your brand needs lots of customers, and so your marketing should reach lots of customers. Now, let's look at where the standard model bends at the edges. And we're seeing some really interesting examples in new economy digital brands, where we're dealing with an ecosystem, where the product's evolving, and where the brand and the business get built up over time. Let's take Apple. Apple is one of the world's great stories of brand growth. And they grew in revenue by 27% in 2016 to 2020. Apple sold 308 million products and subscriptions to a customer base of 855 million people in 2016. But Apple sold 1.06 billion products and subscriptions to a user base of 993 million people in 2020. So that's a 16% increase in users, but a 344% increase in unit sales. Apple didn't just grow by penetration. It also grew because its sales per customer increased by three times in that five-year period. New products and services that are tied to an ecosystem um, just expand the possibility for cross-ownership and customer value. And now let's look at Instagram. The app grew its active users in America by 63% between 2016 and 2020, while revenue grew more than six times over in that time. And revenue grew by um, more than 10 times, from 1.6 to 17.4 billion. Like many digital brands, Instagram gets to grow by monetizing and adding new services. In this case, e-commerce. The brand and the product isn't a fixed thing. There is a further path to growth that sits on top of straight up um, audience penetration. Now, all types of brands depend on broad customer bases but many digital brands just go through this early stage where the demands on them are different. And at this early stage, the goal is viability. It's about attracting employees as well as customers, ensuring the initial product can serve customers, or even proving to investors that the model is worth funding. Now, in this early stage, building around a tightly defined audience or market can actually be more relevant than immediately aiming to win the whole general market. And a lot of digital brands intentionally begin by serving a particular segment. Facebook built critical mass by serving its students at elite colleges before scaling with the general population. PayPal initially concentrated on winning over eBay resellers. Airbnb served young nomadic travelers. Uber served riders in the Bay Area before expanding to cities worldwide. Even Tesla came into the electric vehicle market with a roadster rather than like a high volume family car, because then it would win over skeptics, it would optimize the high unit cost of the new technology. 
So I think we now have a fuller model of how brands grow in the digital world. The baseline is always winning more customers. And sometimes that growth has to begin with a concentrated phase to bring proof of concept and to scale the business up. And then there's a the possibility of adding on a new service layer or adding products to an ecosystem. We don't have to wish for tribal loyalty or create super users who suddenly go from buying three times a year to six times a year. Brand growth is yes and. It's scaling, it's penetration, and it's building an ecosystem. And that is how we get from that standard model to a real unified model for how brands grow today.